problem. Just ask for it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for bringing that time. Well, down, but I wasn't sure if you'd be able to fly. Oh, good. So um, a work session with staff regarding the process and procedure of hiring the town manager for the town of Mary Dance. So I'm going to call the work session to order. So first of all, I wanted to thank everybody for coming. I know there's a lot of different schedules, but I wanted to accommodate some of the staff members um, with children so that we weren't doing this after um, after hours because um, because I didn't want to. I didn't want to yes. And um, so uh, last time we went through this process. Susan had been kind of walked us through it. She was kind of shepherded us through the whole process. So I thought the best way to handle that, she's going to be teaming up with Patty it, um, in that, you know, that vein this time. But I wanted to um, kind of refresh. Well, actually, Patrick's not here. So Patrick's not here, but Patrick was in that process when we were selected Jim Manny. Um, but if you could kind of refresh us on that, on the time frames, the resume, so the council's aware of what you know that process looks like. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to have today for everybody, just because it's something you you know you haven't been through um, before. So, okay. you know, really just kind of what the time frames would be: resumes coming in, yep. and then just kind of semifinal interviews. And, okay. So I'm going to turn it over to Susan. So um, I typically post for three weeks, so the job will be open for three weeks. And just to let you know where I posted when I hired, I hired both um, Jim and Pam Nolan. So this is my third go round at it. Um, I post it on ICMA, um, and that is where you post if you want to draw a national pool as well, because that people will see that from all over. Um, Boston Globe, Hartford Current, um, that gets on monster.com. I post it on the Rhode Island League of Cities and Towns, the Providence Journal, jobsnri.com, and obviously the town website. So that's up for three weeks. Um, when we went to hire Jim, we had uh, 42 resumes come in. You know, you get a few from Alaska, um, you know, a lot from Mass and in the Rhode Island area. Um, so we whittled that 42 down to nine. We interviewed nine people. So you're looking at three weeks for the posting, and then you could be looking at another three weeks to go through the resumes, um, picking your, your first round interviews. Then you have to set up the interview, so there could be a you know a month in between when the, the posting closes and when you're bringing the first people in. Um, interviews. Go ahead. Oh, for, from the for the 42, do you select down to the nine, or how did that happen? So I sent everybody all of the resumes, mm -hmm. um, and then and that's why I think we ended up with so many. With with five people, you're going to have several right. that don't you know match. There were a few that stood out where you know people were in agreement, but. We went through a list, and you know, if you were passionate about someone, even if nobody else was, we brought them in just to, you know, to interview them, and that's how we ended up with nine. Um, so then we do our first round interviews. Usually, if you have, you know, I think we did it in two separate sessions when we had the nine people. Um, then we have to mull that over, and then there's second round interviews, so we have to call them back in for that. Um, then obviously there's the offer process. Um, I work with the town solicitor on coming up with a contract um, that's acceptable to the, to the candidate. Um, so I mean overall looking at from po when you post it to when someone walks in the door, depending, you know, someone of this, um, in this <coughs> profession is probably going to need to give at least 30 days notice to their, their if they're employed, their present employer. It's a, it's a five month minimum process. Um, 
So kind of that semi-final round of interviews. Some of those are by phone. Remember? We'll do them by phone if they live in yeah. Indiana. Yeah, we can. We want them to be live, but um, sometimes those are by phone. They're too far away. away yeah. You know. Yep. Um, but the final round ones. Did we have four finalists? I believe we did have four. Yeah. So um, those we want face to face. Yes. Do we yes. have the location package? No. Is there, any, is there any interest in focusing this more down toward regional search? I, I mean, well, because we we have the unique, uh, not unique, but I think sometimes when you go to a state where it's like right to work and they're not used to dealing with unions, like I don't really see those as being good candidates for coming here to the Northeast and dealing with uh, you know, police, fire, council 94, and 1033 when they have no background in that. Just a thought. Yeah, I think yeah, one of the, all those things about how we would kind of put forward a process, you know, this is just a work session, so then we would put that on how we would make it go out and whether we want the regional, we could kind of come to a, a consensus on that at some point. Um, I just wanted kind of people to be familiarized with mm -hmm. what you had going on. What I wanted to ask Sean actually was if there's a transition period, you know, how long of a transition period are you, you know, Ready. Like so, we let's say somebody we have a hire. They, you know, are you willing to kind of do like a month transition before you go back to police? I mean, when they come, when yeah, they come in here, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll work with the person yeah. to get them up to speed. Sure. And then we'll have in the way that works because everyone we just experienced with Sean to Jim, Jim to Sean. I'm sorry, was you know then we have to kind of have a start date for the person, but there can be a transition. They can, we can hire them on a on a council meeting date, but then have a. a date three weeks later that there's actually the first day so that they can learn the role, go to an SMT meeting, a senior management team meeting, and things like that. Mm -hmm. so, um, I have some questions about the process, yes. just some of the details. So, Jill asked about how you how we got down from 42 to 9, mm -hmm. and you said, you know, people express their preferences. How does that work, though, in terms of the details of how do we express the people that you know yeah. that we like. So we had a meeting um, and where every every council member brought their top say ten resumes and I believe we created a list of our top ten and then we kind of prop I, I think I drew on a board and saw who we had, you know, multiple people with you know the same interest in the same mm -hmm. candidate. And then there were some extras, well, you know, I'm familiar with this person and I think he or she would be a great candidate. So mm -hmm. Uh, it's basically a, a consensus, but you know, I mean, you may know someone that they don't know who mm -hmm. you think is a great candidate, so we would talk to him or her. Okay, so it's kind of a matching system, you know, At if first, five yes. people selected someone and they get five points and they're good. But are you also saying if one counselor had a favorite and it was just one, yeah. that one person, they would still move forward? That's how we did it last time. Okay. Not saying it has to be done that way this time, certainly, but that is how we worked it. And then from the nine down to half, and then. Is that the same process? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then for if we give someone that's a few states away, do we do any compensation for travel for the interview? We didn't get to that point. Um, mm -hmm. As Matt brought up earlier, we did a phone interview with that person, and mm -hmm. I don't believe they made it to the second round. Okay. Um, if someone from far away makes it to the second round, we'll have to address that. Gotcha. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thanks. So this is similar to what we just did with a solicitor. We all had yes. people's names in. <coughs> Exactly the same. Okay. Exactly the same. Yeah. And with the solicitor, when we picked Mark, Mark and, and Patty and Neil had kind of been our final two, so we did much less of a process. Right. Yes. Because it was quick. we didn't. It was. Very when they we were our final two, so we, we went, we convened, and instead of reopening the whole thing up. From. So one thing, everybody, that I wanted, um, you know, remember Pam unfortunately died around the end of January, and Jim's first day was August 1st. So if you have used the process, can get drawn out. So, um, but um, are there any other questions? I'd just like to add something, if I may. Yeah. Um, you know, having done this a couple times before, um, I wonder if in the beginning we should post it more locally. Um, Boston Globe and Hartford Current will draw from all of Mass, Connecticut, and, and Projo will get Rhode Island. Um, we get a lot of candidates. I'm not joking when I said I got three from Alaska last time, which is fine. Maybe they were wonderful people, but let's think about this logically. Bringing someone here from Alaska, not only is it you know, a difficult travel issue, but it's probably not going to be a good fit. Um, I found that the people that are local, um, particularly my experience, you know, like Pam Nolan, who had the coastal Massachusetts experience, 
they're a better fit for this type of community. And I just feel like maybe initially post it locally if they're trickling in, then I can go out to ICMA. Um, but I, it's very difficult to pull someone from Ohio or and anywhere else in this country, you know, other than New England, really, and find a good fit for the position. I, it's not rocket science. It doesn't have to be difficult. It really doesn't. And I mean, we may have a standout candidate who sends us their resume and bring them in early for an interview before this even closes. And you know what I mean? It, not to rush it, but... Um, it's not a black and white process. You, you, right, right. It ha you have, it's malleable, and you have to be flexible. And um, and I just think we'll get a better pool from you know the Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts area. Um, and hopefully we do get the one or two standouts, and we have a tough decision picking from that. So let's just try to keep it, keep it simple, really. Can we agree to post to do that posting now? So we well, I wanted to ask the council before that. I know some people have reached out already to the council potential candidates, and so I, as a placeholder, I put on an executive session. Okay. If the council members want to talk about some of those candidates, to your point, if there's some people that stand out. Right. Um, so, uh, so basically, I wanted to kind of before we did that, I didn't want to have any decisions out of this. I felt to you know share what the process had been and. and I've been through the process three times. It's not the same every time. Right, um, right. As I mentioned, like the solicitor situation, you know, we had recently gone through it. So we had two strong candidates, and we went to the person that, you know, when we picked Mark, Mark and Patty, and then the final two. So Patty O'Neill. So, um, but um, there's something else I wanted to say, but I'm forgetting what it was. Um, anyway, it'll come back to me. So. Um, okay, so did, so uh, that's so I put that executive session as a placeholder. Do people want to talk about candidates? Is there an interest in doing that? Um, yeah. I'd prefer to not do that and go and list it and get a better pool. I don't really want to short circuit the the process by talking about a few local candidates now. So that's my preference. Oh, that was that local candidates. Narragansett residency is important too. It's not required. Um, I know, for example, in Jim's contract, he lived probably closer to town hall than someone who lives in, you know, the North End does to town hall. Um, but we, we did put a clause in his contract that he would be actively looking to move here during his employment. Mm -hmm. But does it currently stand? Does it say that they have to be? They just they don't. It, well, I believe it's in, the, it's in the ordinance, I believe, but it's not. And it's been challenged. It's been challenged and, and one where the residency cannot be required um, okay. through, um, I think it was Ports, Jamestown, yeah. over, over the bridge. Um, it was challenging. It's a local requirement, but it's been challenged right. at the, in the courts right. that you can't enforce it, essentially. So we have it. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it is that. We've dealt with that on the police side, too. So they, yeah. they look more towards having requirements of if there's an emergency, being able to respond within a reasonable period of time. So, well, and Jim was always the intent was always that he was going to move here. I mean, that was mm -hmm. in the contract. We never removed that provision. I mean, that was always part of the. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just the, the house. It's, it's, it's a tough out. requirement. It's right. 14 square miles. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So, did, uh, so as I said, I put the executive session. Are there, would you like to talk about, I know the candidates have reached out to me, obviously that would have to be an executive session if we talk about them. It, it, I'm not going to call for that unless others want to do that. Yeah, I did. Yeah, sure. Okay. Ricky, do you want to? Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is then I'll call for that, and then I think for that we're just going to keep Terry guys for that, um, because, um, and then we'll, we'll circle back with everybody if we need to. All right? Okay. Um, all right, so thank you all. All right, so I'm going to conclude the work session, and um, and then we'll get back about time going forward and touch base. Thank you both. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, so we have a motion to retire.